So one of the weirder developments in Valve news that I've ever seen happened the other day. As pretty much out of the blue, a small team of devs, modders, and many other extremely talented individuals under the team name of Dustfade announced and promptly released a new game which runs on a heavily modified version of the Source engine that CSGO uses. Which, as some of you may know, is sort of a mix between Source 1 and 2. The game is called Military Conflict Vietnam, which as far as names go is pretty basic, but was likely chosen both to avoid similarity to other titles and to make it as straightforward as possible. In this game, you're inside a military conflict set in Vietnam. And as much as that didn't really interest me at first, the game is beautiful. It makes use of many new and fancy lighting and particle effects that aren't part of CSGO, and it makes the game look great. The game is now out in early access on Steam, and everything about it looks pretty cool to me, although I don't see myself picking it up and playing it anytime soon, as I probably wouldn't play it all too much, so the $25 Canadian price tag isn't really justifiable for me. Hide the money, y'all! There's poor people around! <laughs> With your broke ass! But I'm sure it's just right for plenty of people who are into stuff like this, but that's not really the point of this video. So other than the obvious connection to CSGO being there, in the fact that it runs on the same engine and works similarly in many ways, why am I, a guy who plays CSGO every day, talking about it? Well, if you have an interest in source modding of any kind, you've probably heard of Zool, and by connection his ongoing CSGO modding projects, which have mainly been met with at best silence from Valve. And these projects have been going on for like six years at this point, so why has this one gotten picked up so quickly? Well, first of all, it hasn't really. The Dustfade team seems to have been working on this project for at least a few years at this point, and they went through the same process as the Classic Offensive team to obtain a license of the source code for modification. So what's going on? Well, if I'm being honest, Valve seems to have changed at least a tiny little bit in how they handle modding to their games. Uh, that came from the uh, Cleveland Steamer. You know, the act of dropping a log on a girl's chest. On a hobby level, it's still at least encouraged, I guess, even though most of the official Valve modding tools are left in the dust for years without update. But what happens when these projects surpass their casual pet project status and become real games? Well, back in the day, Valve would probably see what you were working on, and if it was good, hire you and buy your game. My name is Garrett Rickey. I'm a programmer working on Portal 2 at Valve. And on Norbacula Drop, the student project, I was the programmer on that as well. But that was in the days of original FPS concepts in a healthy gaming industry. Now, if you're making something with Valve's IPs or source code backing it, and you want to make a full-fledged game with a Steam page, it's still possible, but with a few asterisks. I know that I'm already off topic here, but let's talk about TF2 for a sec. TF2 is a great example of one of the most dedicated and determined fan bases of any video game out there, especially in terms of quality and quantity of community created content. A few mods of the game have been in the spotlight recently, such as the graphical showcasing of TF Source 2, which is a remake of TF2 in the Source 2 engine, as its name implies. Or TF2 Classic, which is a very similar project to Zool's Classic Offensive, as its goal is to bring the best ideas from the ye old TF2 into modern day TF2 to see how it would work. And after poking Valve for some kind of license, or at least support, they were met with a straight up ban, as Valve ordered them to cease operations without much reason. They complied, but after trying to get any reasoning from Valve, they have since brought the project back online. And in a blog post, the team explained that Valve, quote, made it clear to us that they recognize and appreciate the creativity and motivation of the TF2 community and were internally discussing the best ways of letting us express it. And although they have continued operations, it doesn't mean that projects like this are necessarily safe from issues such as this, as Valve have stated that they want nothing to do with reverse engineered code. The problem with this, as Zool brought up time and time again, is that for modders, a constantly updated online game like CSGO might have features changed or removed entirely on the fly, which can completely break mods, therefore limiting what modders can do. So why does Dustfade get different treatment? Well, we may never truly know the inner workings of Valve and why they really do what they do, but I can at least provide my thoughts on this. So here goes. Classic Offensive, as well as TF2 Classic, run on CSGO and TF2 code respectively. This does not, however, mean that they are particularly fundamentally different from their original unmodified versions. They're modifications, after all, not full-on games. In a hypothetical world where these games did become full-fledged, Valve-endorsed spin-off projects to their respective series, they would most likely operate fully independently from those games, and although attracting a similar audience, they would attract a much smaller, more devoted fraction of that audience, which is something that Valve doesn't want for their games. 
If these games had their own workshop page, complete with some kind of price tag or monetization strategy, it would run the risk of competing with Valve's main multiplayer titles. But what is it about Military Conflict Vietnam that makes it so different? Well, the closest Valve title that it can be compared to is Day of Defeat. And in many ways, this game is sort of a spiritual successor to that series. A Source Engine, Valve feeling, military FPS game, which has some realism but a bigger focus on arcade gameplay. So the difference then is about 700,000 active players. This game will be able to foster its own community, likely separate to any of Valve's IPs, and will be able to thrive and grow without catching some of CSGO's swag. I think that this approach is kind of stupid, especially since these other mods could just be absorbed into the main games themselves, therefore not hurting the player base while supporting great community work. And I get that there's downsides to that, but like, imagine CSGO having some kind of classic game mode, which would have remakes of old maps, remastered gun models, and player models and gameplay, same goes for TF2. It's disappointing to say the least that Valve are choosing to turn their back on these fantastic projects, as they used to welcome things like this with open arms. Hopefully, if we ever get Source 2, it will reinvigorate both the community and Valve to work on something truly amazing. So that's all I've got for you today, but thanks so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, consider subscribing and leaving a like so that YouTube knows you like me. Have a great night, and as always, bye.